Awo Shalom Rastafari Salam Tana Taina Yist Aling. Awo Ene Ras Yadinos Tafarine. I am Wendem Yada. And we want to present this this word in twenty twelve. Um, we're in the seventeenth uh, sabbatical sabbatical week. Yotor, uh, much has gone on. We put up a word about the the passing of uh, Whitney uh, Houston, the death of Whitney Houston. Um, we put we recorded a word, and hopefully by the time you check this out, either it would have already been posted, or you can hear some of our views or ideas on that. But may John Rastafari keep her soul and may she rest in peace, you know? But um, this is just one of the events, and I know for different people this event is like the Michael Jackson event, you know? Um, but it also shows this 40 years later, that we're 40 years later. And some of these people and things that we're familiar with are passing away because the form of this world is also passing away. We're moving into a a new age. You know, this is 2012 is like the is like the bridge, so to speak. Now, there's different. Um, I'm not going to just call them speculations, but different researches by different brothers and sisters out there. And I'm speaking of not the atheist so-called rehistory channel stuff or all the stuff out there which is is very questionable and and at and at best deceptive but i'm speaking of those um brothers and sisters of all different races tribes nationalities out there who have been seeking the truth and studying the word and and being guided in the holy spirit to reveal that which they are able to reveal concerning the present state of affairs and and overall ministering to that true word of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christos, whether they receive the fullness of it or not, they are willing to be to be instruments to get the message out and that which they are able to receive and to be. And now, what you're looking at is um, is a word picture of a menorah, of the Hallel um, menorah. And there are Hallel psalms, and these psalms are are prophetic. And here, Helena Lehman, she has put this together, and you can check her out, Helena Lehman. Um, we want to give credit to this uh, Messianic uh, Jewish uh, Sisterin, who's been researching a lot and putting a lot of crucial elements together from what she's able to receive and be a witness to as being the truth. Now, here is a prophetic, a a a possible prophetic timetable for what's known in the scriptures as the Great Tribulation. And 2012 is 2012 is is like the gateway. 2012 is like is like the bridge, so to speak. Some say the Great Tribulation is more like 2015 to to like 2021, 20, 22. They they see the prophetic uh, tribulation time as being within that that window prophetically. Now many say, well, we can't predict or know the the days, the hours, signs, and seasons. And although they may be misquoting and misunderstanding that that scripture, especially as it was revealed to our our brother Paulos or Paul, the, the apostle Paul, when he spoke to ones and ones, and even Christ said it's not for us to know that day or or our that's in the authority of the Father that we're to busy ourselves with the work, but he also said to watch, to watch, to be to be diligent, 
to be diligent. And, and being diligent goes beyond just the idea of just, just looking and seeing something. But looking and seeing with your eyes and, and then seeing it in your, in, your, in your psyche, in your soul, in your mind, and in your spirit. And, and for all those to line up in the trifoldness of man, because man was made in the image of the true God, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the triune, the God of the Trinity, the power, the first power of the Trinity. Now, that being said, this right here begins from like 2010, and it has Psalm 110. Now, the menorah that you see before you is what's known as the nine um, branch um, menorah, Jewish or Hebrew menorah. Now, on this chart that Helena Lehman presents, um, 2011 A.D. is a possible first year of the Great Tribulation. Now, when we came across her works and, and this particular, we was looking for menorahs, and I think this came up. And then we checked out her page, and it was very interesting. And she was referencing a lot of works such as Ethiopic Enoch, you know. Um, she was referencing the book of Enoch and putting things in a more full fashion because there's a lot of atheist scholars out there and like so-called pseudo-white supremacists and Anglo and some Jewish scholars out there who have still have hate, you know. They still have... Um, certain psychic uh, misadjustments regarding the truth of God and, and the reality of his people, his, his once lost but now found black sheep of the house of Israel, his people, and they are on another agenda. So they're the ones out there with the dissemination, giving you parts of the story and little sound bites here and there. This is why we try to go through these teachings as, as full as possible and be honest and share certain resources and, and reference points so ones can find the truth for themselves. Because we're not endorsing all of this but we're saying that considering being diligent and therefore being, being sentient and, 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 and conscious, Christ conscious of this, we know that it is better to watch than to be caught unawares. So 2011 AD is a possible first year of the Great Tribulation. And now from our own calculations, and we wanted to explain a little something on why we use um, two to three calendars um, that might, you know, be a little bit from a Western Gentile perspective that might be a little bit um, daunting or even confusing. Why do we use like the Hebraic or so-called Jewish calendar? And then why do we also use the Ethiopic or the Enochian calendar? And then, of course, there's that middle, so-called middle ground or the Western or the world calendar that we also utilize because, you know, we know what days it is in the week and the months and so forth and so on. So sometimes when we're giving a date, we might give a date in the different years. Like, for example, Le Misale, it is according to the Ethiopic calendar or the Enochian calendar, the Hanokian calendar, this would actually be 7,504 this present year, according to the EC or Ethiopic, the true Ethiopic calendar. Yet, if you look at it from a modern Ethiopian calendar, since the since since um, since Christ or or the manifestation of the Jesus Christos as the Christ, the the Messiah, the Messiah, it is two thousand and four. This will be 2004. Now, of course, in the West, this is 2012. So that's automatically, that's about like an eight year, roughly eight year. It varies from like seven to eight, but rounded off, it's, a, it's an eight year difference. And additionally, we're moving into what we know Ethiopically as the eighth millennium the eighth millennium. Now, if you look at a Western Gentile perspective, this is 2012. And I think the, the Jewish one is up in the 5,000, you understand? And different nations, 
have different calendar dates. And if you go and check it out, you know, they say the Chinese New Year. But do you know, like, what, what, what the calendar date, you know, what the number of the date is? That basically shows you their civilization or their culture since their civilization has been a civilization or since they regarded themselves as being civilized according to their own standards of civilization, which is more or less universal. You know, when a people go from being a tribe and go from nomadic and a more settled existence, and some of that one study in anthropology and sociology and so forth and so on. But when we start to study the, the scriptures in its true context, in its Ethiopic context, all this becomes very much more important. So what we have here, this was from, a, I think this was featured at an Ethiopic site, I think Ethiopianism. And this here says, uh, what is it, the Cementenia, uh, Cimen, uh, Cementenial Shi Kokeb, or the Kokeb, Kokeb, that means the star, is Kokeb right here, then Kokeb the Kokeb of the eighth, of the eighth millennium. And here is a collage of some different um, perspectives of the earth and of the whole so-called Nibiru event. And here you can see almost what they say is to come, this alignment. You can see the alignment with the sun here and different planets, the asteroid belt. In fact, uh, I think this evening on, on this Antenna TV, they had the Stargate episode, and it was called A Matter of Time. If you can get to check that out, Stargate um, episode called A Matter of Time. In the beginning of it, they had a, a very interesting, a very interesting, um, very interesting setup where it was almost like a Nibiru event or perhaps a 2012 um, some sort of a cosmic event, you know, where a black hole or a a a black hole and, and a wormhole, but a black hole was opened up and how it was slowing down with the gravitational effects and waves. It was slowing down time and everything. I thought, how interesting, you know, seeing some of the speculative, but also there is biblical, there is biblical data for us to say that, yes, um, there will be uh, what, for, what from our perspective on earth would, would seem like like heaven, heaven and earth went dark, you know, like there's no star in the sky from, from our perspective. There will be this sort of an event. Um, stars will fall out of heaven, whether these are comets or the satellites falling back to earth. These things will happen. Now, when they will happen, well, that's, that, that, that is not as easily predictable because the, the human factor or the free will factor of humanity and, and the love of the Abba or the Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, or Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, extends that free will and that, and that time of mercy to the souls. You know, because the souls, many souls are heavily burdened. Many souls, you know, each individual, the experiences they go through and, and, and the satanic attack and traps that try to keep people at some lower vibrational frequencies and away from God. And this is why we firebund the atheists, you know, and, and the atheists, you know, it's a whole religion. You know, they may call it maybe a sort of a liberalism today or, you know, um, as well as counterfeit Christianity. There's a lot of forces that Satan has been able to sow his, his, his weeds among the wheat. So we have to be diligent. The main thing is, is, is to be diligent. So in, in embarking on this particular subject matter, which is connected to the time series, we, we had did a time series a little bit earlier in this year, and it's a couple of further... Um, episodes or segments to be uploaded as well but this goes into that whole context because we're looking at 2012 this bridge 
you know, this bridge to, is it the day? In other words, is 2012 this event, is it a day event, or is that day a gateway to a set of days? And from our calculations and, and based on our research and the Holy Spirit's guidance, we see this to be directly mapped within the 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 interpretation of the dream of Joseph concerning Egypt of that time and and concerning this spiritual Egypt of this time or Sodom and Egypt of this time. And there's a very interesting seven to eight year or difference between the so called Western calendar, which was a a combination of a, a regurgitated, reinterpreted hodgepodge of a lot of different based on based on um commercialism, profit, you know, um and vanity, this modern calendar is is, is so corrupted. I mean, just look at the, the, the months you know, the names of what the month's names actually means and how the whole calendar is just, you know, um, it's, a, it's, it's meant to keep ones trapped in, 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 a, in a lower frequency, a lower vibrational frequency, a lower consciousness, and also to, to keep one set off, you understand, and not really to know what God's true calendar is or what his true um, clock is. His true clock is the heavens. And we're not speaking about so-called um, astrology. I say so-called astrology, at least I was misunderstood. We're speaking about what the sustainer, what Ha Elohim, the true God, said from even the beginning. And we've referenced this before, and I think it would be good to um, just reference this once again. And let's go to Genesis, the very first book in the Bible in the Hebrew Bible. And here we're studying this Ethiopically from the Royal Amharic of Haile Selassie, the first is Metaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals. And now, so here we have, we have Orit Zefitret, right? So let's go to, I think it's verse 14, Kuta Asra Arat. And here we go right here, it says, Egeziab Herim Ale. Kenina Lelitin Yeleyu Zen Burhanat Besamai Tefer Yehunu Le Milukatoch Le Milukatoch Le Zemenoch Le Illetat Le Ametatim Yehunu. It says, And God Ha Elohim, or the name of the Elohim before the creation of the world was Egezi Abbeher. And it's been preserved here in the ancient Ethiopic. And we're going to connect this as we get in more into the Ethiopic uh, uh, Hainok. It says, And God, Ha Elohim, said, Let there be lights. Let there be lights in the firmament, the tefer, of the heaven of, it says, Besamai. And it's interesting that here it says Besamai. And elsewhere you have Samayat, which is the plural. But here it's speaking of a singular, of a singular heaven. And in the study on the heavens, when you recognize the heavens have three main references in the so-called real world or the, or the world round and about us. So it says, in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So the real time telling, the, the real way to tell time was based on the, the heavens and the signs and, and the seasons and the days and the years all calculable to God's calendar. This is why the nations of the world and especially the industrial nations, so-called first world, mostly Anglo-European nations, invest so much in these telescopes and in observation decks and so forth and so on. And um, the, the masses, like cattle, they don't understand that. That's like, you know, they think it's just about research. Partly it's about that, but the real answer is here. So the real time is not what you have on your watch, you understand, or what's on the computer or the digital clock. The real 
the real time telling is based on the signs, you understand, in the heavens, based on the lights in the heavens, based on the heavens, basically, as a calendar. And the ancients, they overstood this well. So we use, we utilize as Ethiopian Hebrews and as a select Rastafari, we utilize two main um, time-keeping balances, and that's the so-called luni and the solar, the lunar solar, or the Hebraic, the one can say it's the Jewish, but the Hebraic calendar, and the holy calendar, which should we say, and the Ethiopic or the Enochian, because the Ethiopic calendar is, is structured, even with some of the dilutions here and there among the careless Ethiopians, um, post-revolution, post-73 and, and, you know, after 74 and 75, um, there's been a lot of deletion. Certain holy days are not observed. They've been struck out of the record. So, therefore, time has been altered by striking out, such as the Earth Day of the King of Kings and, and other holy and imperial um, holy days. So that's the solar aspect, like the Leo. You understand? That's the solar aspect right there. Um, so the Ethiopic or the Hainokian is, 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 one can say, a solar-based calendar also because we are children of the light, as the scriptures would say. In the new birth and in Christ, we are children of the light. But now the lunar is important because Proverbs 1 and 8 it will remind us um, um Hear the instruction of thy father, my child, my son. Hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. So on the mystical or the metaphysical level, you understand, and that's dealing with the the spiritual aspects or or the or the um the spiritual calculation, the heavenly calculation, as opposed to the earthly. You understand? And to balance those two. So we have within Proverbs 1 and 8 a reference to to hearing the instruction of the Father. So the solar, there's a, there's a structure, an order, an instruction, structure. And forsake not the law, the law now of the mother. So we have the Torah. Or in ancient Egypt, it was the Tauret, the Tauret, the so-called hippopotamus, um, mother sort of, sort of goddess, at least that's how later on among those who were less less um, less knowledgeable of the symbolism, they they mistook the symbolism for for the actual and this is how we have them changing their glory, you understand, into like a cow that eats grass and so forth and so on. That was an error that even crept in to ancient Egypt and Moses now is the one that is able to reconstruct the bridge to create that bridge through the Hebrew or the Hebrew you understand order and through the God of the Hebrews so this is why when we look and we're able to properly put into to its proper context the Bible and refer it to it, the context of the time, which is ancient Egypt, ancient Ethiopia, black, Afro-Shemitic peoples, it starts to, the full picture, it starts to become like, not like the old boob tube, but more like um, 1080, you know, high definition, high density, you know, on that sort of a level. So we wanted just to make a reminder about the importance of learning the Hebraic, our Judaic calendar. You understand that we begin with the law of the mother. You understand? It says to hear the instruction of the father and forsake not, leave not the law of the mother. This is why it says that the, 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 the law is, is a schoolmaster. In the Old Testament, we, we had the mother. You understand? Israel was our, our mother, and the Torah was a mother to bring us to the New Testament, the Hadith Kidan, to bring us to Christ. And now Christ told us those things of the Abba, you understand, of the Father. You know, so the family now, this is what brings us in as, as newborns. 
into the family of the true God and of his Christ. So I wanted to do a, a brief message on 2012 being a bridge, you understand? Know and that it's not just so-called one one day, or at least, at least it's not, it's not uh, December 21st. Do not put all your expectation, but be prepared. You know what I'm saying? To be prepared. And when we say be prepared, not first just your physical, but first your spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Your God connection. Your connection with God consciousness, that means with life, and therefore with the life giver and the eternal life to sustain the life. And on the psychological level, the soul level, Christ is the savior of our soul, our psychological level, because there will be more mayhem, death, and destruction because of psychological um, breakdowns. Even like the Bible says, people, people are, are, uh, hearts are failing them out of, out of fear, out of the expectation of the things that are to come to pass on the face of the planet Earth. But now, the scriptures also teach us that the true God does nothing unless he reveals it to his servants, to, to the prophets. Now, we probably have to clarify what we mean by prophets because out of, out of atheistic ignorance, people have a misconception about prophets. Prophets are those news bearers those news bearers of, of God, those, those human news bearers, those who bear forth the news. It's not always just to prophesy or predict. We think it's to predict, but it's to speak something, you understand, to come to pass or that has already come to pass or to reveal something about an already past thing. So it's not always just to, you know, like, like guess what this is going to be. It's not that kind of prophet. But in the New Testament, a prophet, the, those who spoke prophetically were not ones who were revealed or directly commissioned personally by God as the prophets of old, in other words. But the, in the New Testament, in the Christ sense, in the Christ consciousness, and, and, and Christ in his kingly character, us going forward, it is to speak forward and to tell forward, having the Holy Spirit guide one's illumination, tell forward the things that are relevant spiritually to the situation and to the people who you're speaking to for their, for their benefit, with the hope that if the Almighty wills, they too can be saved and they can find salvation. They can, they can find the truth for themselves and, and make that decision and make the right decision because that's what it's about in this time. What decisions have you made? You understand? And if you're, you're not consciously with the God of truth, then that means you're with the liar, you're with the deceiver. But the Almighty in his mercy, you understand, um, he shortens, he's shortening the time. You understand? And we're seeing his signs day by day, but most are blinded to what truly the Bible says and how the Bible truly is that key that we need. And by and by, many will come to understand that, even though they may mock at it presently. But the day of the Lord, some say that this 2012 is the day of the Lord, and, and the Mayans have... Um, anticipated and that the Mayan calendar ends in 2012. Well, you know, a lot of those things people say, check them out for yourself because the Mayan calendar doesn't end in 2012. 2012 is a, is a significant, it's like an event horizon. It's like an event horizon. It, now, whether and how that is perceived by human beings and we on the face of the earth, that really depends largely on us individually each of us individually and all of us collectively and in whatever groups that we are in. You know, it's because like attract like. You see, so if it's a time of great devastation and destruction, then like attract like. If it, if it passes seemingly peacefully, at least for the moment, then like also has attracted that. But there's a lot of forces that are bound to try to make that day significant. You know, they'll probably look around. If they don't see anything, they, they're going to want to do something to make that day 
significant. But I and I must be watchful, diligent, and that means to be prepared and careful and, and, and to pray. That means to render sacred service and to speak with the source, speak with our Abba in and through the authority of Christ and to have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, speak to us and through us. See, knowing the, the prophecies of the true God, that's what will save you. A lot of people, you know, telling people, go here, go there, do this, do that. You know, like physical, physical, only physical things. You understand? And they're totally neglecting, you know, the spiritual power. You know, the spiritual power which, which gives strength to the psychological state or the soul of man. And with the empowered spiritual power of Christ. And, the, and our, our soul is strengthened and, and is fortified. And therefore, our body, you understand, have, all, have already gone to that next, that next level or that next dimension, dimensional, has, has gone through the resurrection, you know, following the Son of Man in the resurrection. It's, I, I would dare say it's almost like the Matrix, a Matrix movie in a sense. That was a good visualization based on the script by by Sophia Stewart, an African American woman, even though they try to suppress that, the truth the truth the truth will overcome and will prevail by and by. But here in um second epistle of Paul to the Thessalonians, it speaks of the day of the Lord. That the day of the Lord and it also speaks of the man of sin. And it says, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Adonainu, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Getachi Jesus Christos, and by our gathering together, that's the key, our gathering together to him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, that even at that time ones were hyping it up. You know, they were saying that, you know, um, see, see that th th there's a... Um, there's a diabolical strategy in that, too. You know, it's almost like the guy that was talking about the preacher saying that he knows when the world's going to end. After all, he must have become acquainted with in the Scripture still to go out there like that and to deliver it in that way. You know, he considered this is a very significant day. Be prepared. I'm not saying the end of the world, but he was saying that when the world was going to end you know, and putting out signs and everything. And then he updated it for a little bit later on, you know. And um, just because he probably thought he knew the Bible doesn't mean that, you know, some, for whatever reasons, which are personally known to them, you know, individuals fall short. You understand? Like the scripture says, let every man be a liar, but Jah is true. And so Paul is saying here that, we shouldn't be soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us, as the day of Christ or the day of the Lord, the day of Christ is at hand. It is is like is like at hand. Now, Paul is saying this because, according to what he was knowledgeable of, and, and that's more of the fullness of Torah and the prophets and the Psalms, that this matter about the day of the Lord was carefully studied from even the ancient Hebraic, black Jewish, and even later on other Jews, um, was studied in, in great detail according to what the prophets had said. Many rabbis and scholars and others had studied this, and many of them had understood you know, this is why you had Nicodemuses and, 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 and Joseph of Arimathea, you understand, who were Pharisees too, but they received Christ, you know, but there was a spirit in the Sanhedrin, you understand, to do what they did. But this matter had been carefully studied, you understand, and because they understood that the prophets of old, you know, that's who we should be studying, the prophets of old, like like Isaiah and Daniel and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and even the so-called minor prophets. Those are the ones who we should be studying because many of the so-called true signs of this time to come have already been outlined in many of many of the prophets. And we in our studies, you know, even about the earth turning upside down, 
either the so-called magnetic pole shifts and, and the fact that the, the crust of the earth, you understand, is quite movable and under certain pressures, so forth and so on, because there needs to be a, 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 a purge, a purgation of, of the earth, you understand, of the earth. And we're speaking about spiritually, psych- psychically, and, and physically, because there's much pollution. And, and now we are coming to that, that culmination or end of an age, that bridge towards the ending of an age and the beginning of a new. Now, once again, we put this chart here, although others, like I say, differ on the dates. You know, some say it's 2015. Now, when we mentioned the Ethiopic, um, the Ethiopic uh, uh, calendar, um, 2000 Ethiopic calendar, in the Ethiopia, and according to the Ethiopic uh, calendar, 2000 and uh, 2000 was 2007 in the West. And, of course, you should know that 9-11, September 11th, is Ethiopia's New Year's Day, except well, one exception is on those leap years. You understand? They say roughly about every four or so years. But September 11th, which is 9-11, now people talk about Masonic secrets. So no, it's an Ethiopic secret. You understand, almost an open secret, but it's an Ethiopic secret. So there's there's much more in that understanding of the Ethiopic calculation of time because when it turned 2007 in the West, with the rise of Obama, was actually the Ethiopian new millennium. That was, and that might have been one of the reasons why many um, so-called native. Um, Ethiopians that are over here, refugee or whatever other status in the Americas, were very excited, you understand, about, as well as other peoples, about the prospects of Obama because there was a connection with the Ethiopian millennium or the Ethiopian year 2000. Now, there's a significance to that, which goes to the Ethiopic book of Adam and Eve, um, or what's often called the Testament of Adam and Eve, another Ethiopic work, the Book of Jubilees, um, which is more of a mosaic work connecting now um, the bridge from 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 the Hanokian, connecting the Hanokian with with that which was redeemed out of Egypt to Yahweh to the Lord. Now we'll get in some of those details as we're able to, um, because some basic basic matters here. So let's just touch on this right here. So considering this new millennium, you understand? So we had 2007 Western calendar actually equaling in the, according to the Ethiopic conversion, 2000. This year is 2004 Ethiopic calendar, Ethiopic calculation. In the West, you call it um, 2012. Already that's an eight-year difference. So we have to remember that in Yosef interpreted the dream about the, about the cows. Remember the seven uh, Hathors or the seven cows? That uh, he interpreted there will be seven years of like plenty. You understand? And then there will be seven lean years. Now, when you overstand and see the use of sevens, even biblically, especially in the book of Revelation, that, and, and, and how seven is, is, is like a, a week, you understand? And, and we're speaking now on, on, a, on a galactic or a heavenly scale, you know, these events that is about to affect the earth. That's already affecting the earth, but it's about to have much more dramatic effects. On, on on the earth and, of course, on the inhabitants thereof. Because now these other signs that Paul was talking about when he said, let no man deceive you by any means, that that day would not come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And he goes through this mystery of iniquity 
We already know that the mystery of iniquity has been fulfilled when you're looking at the proper perspective of the scripture and interpretation with the counterfeit Christianity, the counterfeit church. You understand the whitewashed, blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus. You understand so called racist supremacy or white supremacy. You know, and what affected the lost sheep or black people in the Americas and the Caribbean. You know, and there's there's a lot of overlapping, you know, facts and, and factors out there and a lot of others much better than ourselves, we think, you know, have at least laid a foundation for those who are interested in in the the the, the real Jews or the black Jews, the, the Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Hebrews and who we really are and how important that is, you understand, know, with this whole end time perspective. If you look at other twenty twelve um prognostication and predictions, it's like black people are nobody, you know, but then when we recognize really who we are, you understand that this whole, this whole shit system or system, this end time system, Gentile world, white supremacy, world domination, white world domination, which is the Gentile world domination, was built on our sweat, our blood, and our tears, and on our very backs. That's why there's a pyramid you know, on the dollar. You know, they could tell you whatever they want to tell you, but that's why there's a pyramid on the dollar. You understand, of course, significant from the Western perspective of Egypt and pyramid. Well, of course, it's the, it's the Jews or the, the Israelites, the Hebrews, really, biblically speaking, the he, they're not even called Jews there, but, uh, but they're called Hebrews, you understand, or the Hebrews, and what they were alleged to have done, you know, building... Um, Pharaoh's treasure cities and so forth and so on. Some interpret in that um, building the pyramids. If anything, it was more like um, renovating, you know, renovating the pyramids. Even today, many black men, you know, there's many black men who are skilled in carpentry and in and in construction. And if, in our history, a lot of the the best and most historic buildings, especially in some um, antebellum portions of the South, even the ironwork was wrought by, by so-called slaves that couldn't read or write, but they carried in their DNA, you understand, this, 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 this skill, this, this, this wisdom, you know, this, this wisdom and this skill and craftsmanship, and it's still there, but it's really been suppressed by the mass media, the culture, the so-called ghettoizing you know, um, putting a false image before the youths, you know, because they, they understand that our consciousness, our rising, our becoming the sons and recognize ourselves as the children of the true God, of the King of Kings and his Christ, you understand, that also changes the whole paradigm in a cosmic way, you understand, um, exponentially greater than any so-called um, other so-called physical, just the consciousness, you understand, just the consciousness itself, it creates atmosphere, you understand, it creates, it creates environment, you know, it, it touches other dimensions as well, you know, and in the present state of um, black people, you know, it just behooves me to uh, do and to remind ones to just watch, you know, be careful, be diligent, you know, because niggas will be niggas, but, but pray for them. And, and, and if it's so possible, because we know that the majority of them are lost, and if possible, they will find salvation. Yet the scriptures remind us that it's, it's only a remnant still, you know, and just because a remnant, this does not mean we should not in Christ and for Christ's sake, you know, for Jesus Christ's sake to to pray for them. So we're going to get into this a little bit more. We have a couple other other presentations right here. Um but we'll probably touch on this a little bit a little bit later, but um the calendars, the calendar the calendar was something that we wanted just to remind one to really get to learn the calendar, we begin with the Hebraic, you know, with the Hebraic calendar and an excellent way to catch up 
on it is to participate with I and I in the Torah portion readings and to also, you know, learn to use, you know, the um the weekly Sabbath readings, Sabbath portion readings and even in trying to figure out and calculate, okay, when is this? And we try to give a lot of updates about this and answer certain questions for ones so they can know, well, where are we reading? So so ones can know like where to read because there's a certain order, a certain structure. Now, when we expand on this and as we go forward to the to the Ethiopic um to the Ethiopic Hanok or Enoch, once again I want you really to get a good a good look at this and check out Helena Lehman, um some of her work out there is very, very interesting. There's another chart I think that we have here that's a little bit more detailed. And when I saw it, it was prophetically what I had already seen in the basic structure. There's some details that might differ, but in the basic structure of what we already saw, seeing that 2007 was the year 2000, right? So that means... There is a uh, people already think 2000 was then, so it's almost like a parallel universe to to better try to grasp it. There's like a parallel universe kind of um going on. It seems like the Ethiopic calendar is so called behind, but really, from all that we have researched, it is really on time. It is in this proper time context that, that and the Western calendar is that which is 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 set ahead. And one of the reasons for setting it ahead is um, so that they can anticipate and control events, certain events. They can get like a glimpse into certain events. It's kind of, I want to say hard to explain, but we don't really have maybe the charts and the diagrams to, to better explain that. But that's one of the reasons why the so-called Western calendar is kind of like fast forward. It's almost like, when somebody sets their clock, you know, when they set their clock a little bit fast, you know, so that, you know, they have a lateness problem, for example. They have a problem being late. So what they think to do is set it ahead. So when they set it ahead, they they would originally act on that forward setting. But what happens after a while is people, they set their watches ahead, their clocks ahead, and then when it rings at that time, they say, oh, I know I got five more minutes. I got five more minutes. And in a sense, Babylon has done that too in this, in this world system, in this hillum, in this alam, this hillum, you know, while they're dreaming, you know, in this, because, you know, the world is in a sense like a dream if one understands that Ethiopically. So they're like the person, Babylon's like the person who has, has set their clocks a forward ahead so that they can always be on time because of a lateness issue. You see, now who has a lateness issue scripturally? It's Diablos, it's Satan. Satan has a short time. So recognizing they have a short time, almost like doubling over the time a little bit, folding over the time. And this is how time is bent, because time is not really a thing. Time is a consciousness. So not only do they set their, their um, calendar in the West ahead, this is why we have to consult and utilize the Enochian calendar, but they make everyone else conform to it as well. So in that sense, people forsake their own ancient um, calculation of time and systems that basically, unlike maybe other things in their culture, some of the things like their calendars and, and other things that were based on measurable and observable phenomena, like the rotation of the heavens, and we already pointed out Genesis 1 and 14, that the heavens is, is, is the true God's calculation. This is why all ancient cultures referred to and referenced to the heavens. And this is also one reason why Psalm, uh, is it, was it 19? And this is one of the Psalms that I know we as the brethren, you know, we um, chant this particular Psalm and, for many of us, it's a favorite psalm, um, this beautiful psalm. It makes you really, you know, in a meditative state of mind, you know, in a sacramental state of mind, you really can, 
and especially if you're in the outdoors too, you probably can you get it you get it much better. But I'll just share a portion of a portion of this um, because it helps to it helps to um, emphasize and 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 bulwark what we are saying here. It says that the heavens declare this. Okay, to chief musician, the Psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God, of Jah, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day to day uttereth speech, and night to night sheweth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line, their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Now let me just bring up this little visual right here. Just want to bring bring a visual well, this is this is probably the only visual we have of the heavens because I want you to look at the Simentenyao Shi Kokeb or the the so called Nibiru Ethiopically this is the the Kokeb or the star of the eighth millennium. But hear what this Psalm, Psalm 19 is saying. Psalm 19 says the heavens declare, the heavens are declaring the glory of God. You see, the only stars people look at is the stars on, on TV and in the movies or music stars, so-called, celebrity stars, false gods, you know? And the firmament sheweth his handiwork, the firmament. Remember when it says the um, for signs and season and days and years, you know, he set lights in the firmament, you know, those lights being interpreted as the stars, which showeth his handiwork. Day to day utter of speech. So every day there's a speech that's uttered. But what speech is that? Have you heard that speech day to day? Have, have you been able to become conscious to hear that language? And night to night sheweth knowledge, and night to night showeth epigenosis, the full knowledge or knowledge, knowledge from the night seasons, because how the heavens have been understood in all cultures. This is why a lot of cross cultural studies, even by our brother Macy, you know, St. Gerald Macy, whom white supremacists and certain um infected uh, Christians who have been affected with the white supremacist philosophy or counterfeit Christianity cannot overstand and receive Macy. All Macy is saying is that, yes, the Hebrew Bible is true, but from an Ethiopic or a black perspective as the groundation or the foundation. But it goes on to say that there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard, where their voice is not heard. You know, they say that the heavens have a symphony. You you heard people talking about this in some of these videos. You understand um, that some of these uh, um, researchers into the heavens, astronaut types and the NASA types and the rest of it, been talking about, like on NOVA and these programs, that the heavens have a symphony. There's a music they put it plays. So there's no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. But where that voice is heard, that is speech. That is language, their line. So they have a line. Somehow we're going to have to interpret this as going out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. So is there an end of the world to the, to the far off regions of the world? In them hath he set a tabernacle, a dinquan, a tent, a, a mishkan for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. Is this Nibiru? Is this Nibiru, which is as a what? A bridegroom coming out of his chamber, his, his special place, since Nibiru has a very unusual um, orbit, unlike the other so-called planets. Um, and it, it goes on to say, that he rejoiced as a strong man to run a race, a particular course in the heavens, where some say it had for what twenty six thousand years, some have estimated 
this course, that's how long a full orbit or so it takes. His going forth, and if 26,000 is accurate, that's interesting because Yahweh or yod Hey wow Hey, the inevitable um, name of the sustainer, numerically or Kabbalistically is 26 as well. The I am that I am. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit to the ends of it, the circuit of the heavens. And there is nothing hid from the heat, from the heat thereof. So everything is affected by the heat of, 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 of the sun. You understand? A tabernacle, he has set a tabernacle for the sun, for the sun, which is as a bridegroom. Notice what it says right here. See, here's where a lot of people have misunderstood this. And the Holy Spirit just showed me this. And I went over this. I didn't see this before either. That the son is not that bridegroom, but this one whom the psalm is speaking of is speaking of, of being like a bridegroom. So figuratively speaking, remember day to day, night to night show of knowledge. So they knew what they was talking about because in the night season they got knowledge by observing the, those heavens. So it says right here that which is as a bridegroom. So not the son that we call the son in that sense, but another son or one who is like a son because of the luminosity of this body. You understand? Of this heavenly body. Now a lot of folks say that there is no Nibiru. But remember what the scriptures and the prophets say, that these things will happen suddenly to come as a sneer of all those who dwell on the face of the earth. So it's not going to be predictable. I wanted to speak towards that, too, where some think that these things are predictable, like by just looking at the stars in the heaven. So, no, you need to have the script. It's like almost like computer. The, co the computer for this reality is the B-I-B-L-E, is the Metaf Kedus, rightly understood and comprehended. So nothing will be hid from the heat of this sun. And they even said that the sun is, is heating up. They had an article up there. It's pointing, they say, uh, um, the, the barrel of the gun. The sun is pointing a barrel at earth or some kind of language like that. But let's just go through this and, and, and fulfill this portion, conclude this psalm here, which we see in, a, in, in its proper heavenly dimension, helping us to comprehend these things that are happening and are about to happen. So now mentioning you understand that in them hath he set a tabernacle for the son, which is as a bridegroom. Now, the bridegroom theme is a revelation theme, like the Hebraic marriage or the so-called Jewish marriage. It's, it's what we see going on in Revelation, you know, as a bride. Even Christ spoke to that. He used the same symbolic or Henochian or Enochian to Hutan. You understand the Tehutan language of the of the Tehuti order or Tehut. You understand order to to describe. You understand that it's like a a a, a, a great man who had a wedding for his son, a king. You know who had a wedding for his son. So we see the same sort of language right here, and it's speaking about like the end of the world to even symbolize the end of a particular age when the heavens have come a full rotational cycle. But here's what it says further. The law, we were just talking about the Torah or the Tauret of Yahweh, he who is who he is, is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh, he who is who he is, is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahweh, he who is who he is, is right, or are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh, he who is who he is, is pure, enlightening the eye. The fear or the reverence of Yahweh, he who is who he is, is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh, he who is who he is, are true and righteous altogether. Now, notice something right here. It says the law, right, of he who is who he is, of the old hey, wow, hey, is perfect, how it converts the soul. This is why we must begin with Torah 
You understand? And even Christ had to teach his, some of his disciples who didn't get it, had to go over Torah and the prophets and the Psalms so they can get a groundation. The testimony, secondly, is sure. It makes wise. It gives wisdom to the simple. So the testimony, the statutes of Yahweh. Now, this deals with the ordinances and, and the seasons, the holy days and the seasons and the proper calculations thereof are right, rejoicing the heart. Remember when the Israelites came out, the first thing that we read is that joy, that even the Passover miracle was concerning that joy, sisha, you understand, that joy, that rejoicing the heart, because they kept the statutes and they were preserved. You understand, because they knew what time it was and how to act accordingly. The commandment of Yahweh, he who is, who he is, is pure, enlightening the eyes, or as Christ says, making that eye single and full of light. You understand? That, that, that consciousness, this is the fear, right, of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever, right? And then it says the judgment of Yahweh. So far we counted about, what, what, what was it? It was about um, about six six attributes, six attributes. Some people say, "Well, why is it six? The law, the testimony, the statutes, the commandment, the reverence, and the judgments." It's six, but in the context of the psalm, in the context of the psalm, it is seven because remember, it says the glory of God. So glory. You see, that glory is first. That is Shekinah, Shekinah, you understand, is first. So we, so we have the glory. Then we have, have these six right here. You know, when they say that with a stargate, if you're navigating a stargate, according to the speculations of um, the whole stargate, the whole stargate, and Enoch knew about the stargate. He traveled through the stargates. You know, I mean, needless to say, you know, there are stargates in, in, in Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Africa. You understand they're there, but the people are not on the consciousness level to see it or to, or to interface or interact with it. You understand, as their consciousness, their Christ consciousness rise up because he stands at the door. You understand, he stands at that door. They say the door of your heart. Well, yes, your heart and your mind. You know, when your heart and your mind is able to receive more, you know, those pure, see, the, the law begins that process because we have the glory of God, right? And they can approach the mountain because the glory, this is the commandments. This is the RSS Rastafari Sab Sabbatical Studies Week 17, Yotor, or Jethro, and, and we're dealing with the commandments in this particular Torah portion, the Orit portion, the Orit Minbab, and we have the law here which is the beginning of the perfection, the beginning of the soul conver conversion, you understand, the testimony, you understand, making wise the simple, the statutes, being right in themselves, rejoicing the heart. That means that ones get over these psychological things. Now, to navigate a gateway, they say you need, you need six chevrons, like six, um, six coordinates, you understand, I think that, you know, you still like six coordinates and the, and the seventh, you understand, is like basically it's, it's a six point star is is what they is what they're imaging. If you look at the six point star, you understand those six are the ones around, and then the seventh is that is is the inner is the inner space, the inner space. The same thing we have here, but on the metaphysical, the spiritual, ones might say the mystical level. But if received, they open up a real dimension, a consciousness especially as one's eyes are what enlighten or illuminate it. The, we didn't say eyes, it's eyes here, right? Now, the fear of the Lord is a phrase of Old Testament piety. But the meaning of this, and brothers and sisters, take a note of this, the fear, when you read or hear fear of the Lord, understand and comprehend it, receive it in the sense of reverential trust. One has a reverence, but a reverential trust, like, like a, a faith, a right, a correct faith, you understand? But out of reverence, you understand, that's coupled with a hatred of evil, of what the Almighty considers evil, even if you are conscious that you 
are or have been engaged in that evil, first begin by recognizing evil is evil. They like to say, call a spade a spade. You understand? And in that sense, one has that fear of the Lord. You know, many folks in the Bible would be, would be considered to be ones who had the fear of the Lord. And yet when they did some error or for, for, fell short, of the kubra, the glory. How do you fall short? Because of violation of the law. You understand? Or the testimony, giving false testimony, or not keeping the right statutes, or violating the commandments. You understand? Or or not reverencing, you understand? Yahweh. You understand? That's why we say ras tefari, the head to be reverenced, and ja ras tefari. You understand? As a, as a new stargate. Because every what we should say every nigga is a star, right? In a sense, that is that is true. And these attributes here in the psalm, it helps to um, bring to consciousness the working and the outworking of the simplicity. You understand know of the word of God. You understand know if it is received. You understand know if it's received. That's what says more to be desired are they than gold. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. More by, moreover by them is thy servant warned. So the scriptures help to warn us. And, and of course we'll recognize in ourselves when we look at the word and even the testimony of Jesus that we fall short of that. But now that encourages us to be watchful, diligent, and prayerful and willing to receive, you understand, know receive of him and acts of him, you understand, know to overcome and to grow. You see, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, they say prayer is, is talking with God or communicating. There is a communication, and we verify it by the illumination of the word or by, by the scriptures, you understand. Know so we learn to find within us, the positive virtues and values of the scriptures, and we do war, you understand, on the metaphysical, psychical level about that which we regard to be those violations within within our psychical. First thing we have to admit that is uh, evil according to Jah and replace or get rid of your own false standards because a lot of people got false righteousness, uh, self-righteousness, where they, have, where they have their own their own order of things. You see, and discipleship is part of the process, which, which ideally is geared like boot camp, you know, to 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 get one out of that, you know, almost like to break them. So the the Torah and the real receptability of God's word and spirit and truth, it really breaks us, you know, it, it breaks that it breaks that natural man in us, you understand, and then we can begin to. That's when the real Born again, in other words, we've mortified. In other words, we've killed off. You understand on the on on the on on the mystic level, the old man. You understand, or caused him to die, or allowed him to die. You understand. That's what the baptism is a is a symbol is a symbol of. But the 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 fullness of that type is to explain a a it's an initiation, but it's 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 like it's like almost like the counterfeit of it is when they put you in the coffin in the skull and the bones. That's the, that's the atheistic counter, you know, the counterfeit right here. You understand? And you die. You understand? Uh, and then they, they resurrect you. That's the counterfeit there of what the church or the scripture has the truth. In the early church, that's the truth right there. Moreover, by them is thy servant one. You understand? So we become his servants even though we're sons. The first stage is to become his servants want and in the keeping of them there's great reward but in order to um know that one must do it that like christ says anyone who does the will you understand of my of my father you know who does it they they will know you know and those of us who have done it to the proportion we've done it this is why we can faithfully uh, testify of the right faith who can understand his errors Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent 
from the great transgression. In the Jewish uh, Tehillim, or Tehillim, uh, the footnote for this verse, verse 13, next to the great transgression, it says, rebellion against the king of kings. That's exactly what it says, you know, and that just, um, that reminds us right here, and we want to bring that up of, of, of our godfather of Ketamawi Ala Salase. Let's see if we we have that right here, because I think this would be appropriate um, to here here goes right here of the King of Kings that it says in the Jewish um, in the Jewish Tehillim, which is the Book of Psalms. In the footnote, and you know what? Let's see. Do we have it over here? Okay, we we don't have it over here. Otherwise, we would have showed showed the item if we had it over here. Um, we'll show you. But what we'll do? We'll take a snapshot of it and want to have some. Put some, put some galleries up on our site where some of these clips and other things ones can download and, you know, also utilize them as, as, as evidence, you understand, or as word pictures to, you know, to uh, preach and proclaim and to tell I and I story. So it says in the Jewish uh, footnote to this psalm, Psalm 19, it says, although I think it's Psalm 18 there, it says, um, from the great, then I shall be innocent from the great transgression. So the great transgression is and was and will be rebellion to the king of kings. And in the fullness, in the, the eschatological or, or theocratically speaking, rebellion against the king of kings and his Christ. Although rebellion against the king of kings, the true king of kings, is to rebel against Christ. In other words, rebellion against the Father is rebellion against the Son. Rebellion against the Son is rebellion against the Father. So it's the same thing. 